today I'm going to be working on my 1995 Toyota Hyus with the 1KZ TE turbo diesel engine and I'm going to be doing a timing belt, AC belt, and alternator belt as well as an oil change. Now, the first step as you might imagine is getting to the engine and for that you have two latches on the passenger side, one right there and another one under the cup holders. And then you just pull up and then to get this to stay you've got this little strap here and you just hook it in right there. For even more access to the engine we're going to go on to the driver's side where we'll take out the driver's seat. First off you've got this little plastic cover which you will remove and throw somewhere and there are two 14 millimeter bolts which you're going to take out here and here. Then I'm going to move the seat forward so I can get to the bolts at the back. One and two. And now with the seat all the way back again, you're going to pull up this little tear in the carpet and that's going to be the wiring connector for the seats. So you just unclip this and then undo that clip right there which holds this harness down. There's just one thing left holding it in and that is going to be another 14 millimeter bolt right there. The next step for this particular heist is to vacuum all of this crap out and take out an old Japanese TV antenna booster that hasn't worked in years. Next step, taking out all of these 12 millimeter bolts holding that thing in. And there's one connector right here for the parking brake. And we can just rotate this whole thing off to the side with the exception of some random wire that I don't know what it goes to. So with that out of the way, we can access the driver's side of the engine. There's the exhaust manifold and the tiny little turbo, and that is the AC belt, of course. And below that, there's two belts, and those are actually both of the alternator belts. So for the timing belt cover, which is this thing right here, first up, I'm gonna take off this 10 millimeter bolt right here. And then there's a few of these little clips here, which you just pop off and set aside. And a 10 millimeter just down there. This one is not the easiest to get to, but it's all possible. And another 10 mil down there. Now this one is very tight down there. And then last but not least, there is one more right there. And for this one, you're going to either want a long socket or a little extension. This is a quarter inch drive ratchet that fits right on there. And voila. Now the whole timing cover should come right off. There's the timing belt. And mine, of course, looks like it's in fantastic shape, so I probably don't need to replace it, but I'm going to anyways. So now with everything visible, first thing I'm going to do is take off those four nuts right there, which hold the fan on. That way I can get to all the belts and the crankshaft pulley so I can rotate the engine to get it to top dead center before I take off the timing belt. So now with the fan out of the way, I can finally fit my 22 millimeter socket on my ratchet over the crankshaft pulley, and that way I can rotate the engine to get it to top dead center. And as you can see right here, if you forget to put these nuts back onto that pulley, they all come off. So I'm going to take those bolts off right now because they're coming off anyways. And to take off the AC belt, it's a 14 millimeter on the pulley there. And then you adjust it using, again, a 14 millimeter. And then when you've turned it down enough, it should come right off. So to loosen up the alternator to get the belts off, I found taking a 14 millimeter and a short extension on a 3 8 drive gets the pivot bolt off. It's pretty much impossible to see from here. You kind of have to use a mirror or lay on the engine like an idiot. The other two bolts that are the adjuster uh, for one of those, you're going to want to use quarter inch drive with a short 10 mil socket. And the other one is a 12 millimeter and a long 12. That 10 millimeter bolt down there, that is the adjuster, and then directly underneath that pulley there is where the 12 millimeter bolt that you're going to need to undo is. So here's all the old belts. These are both of the alternator belts, and they have seen some better days. Same with the AC belt, but I have new ones right here. Now that I've got that pulley back on there with a couple of nuts to secure it, I'm going to move my attention back to the timing belt. I'm going to crank the engine over to get it up to top dead center, because I need to line up that little indentation on the cam gear to the top and that should line up the mark on that gear to the line as well. Engine is at top dead center. This mark lines up and it may be kind of hard to see due to the constraints of the high engine bay, but the bottom mark also lines up perfectly. So now I'm gonna take the belt off. 
And to do that, I'm gonna take off this tensioner down here, which has two 10 millimeter bolts holding it on. So this is the timing belt tensioner, and right about now I'm wishing that I ordered a new one because this one is completely seized up. Usually you wanna push this down into here, put a pin through there so you can put the belt on, then pull that pin and it tensions itself. All right, so this pulley now we can move and the belt comes right off. So this is the new timing belt on top of the old one, just comparing them to make sure they are the same size, and they are, but the one problem is the new timing belt does not have the little lines that line up with the cam gear, so I'm going to make them with Sharpie. And voila, the new belt is on there, all the marks line up. This side is tensioned enough where the spacing is correct. This side obviously is not, but in the meantime, I guess I can still do my oil change. So for the oil change, the drain plug is a 14 millimeter. And for the oil filter, it's pretty simple. You just grab it one of these things and then turn it. Here's a new filter, but this is the part number also. New filters in. I'm going to let the oil drain overnight and hopefully that tensioner shows up before too long. It is a new day and I have a new tensioner that finally showed up. This is the part number for it. It's from a brand that I have never heard of, but the bolt holes seem to line up with the old one, although the pin is flipped around. So I'm going to reverse that and then throw it in the van. Got the tensioner installed. It's very simple. You just put the two 10 millimeter bolts in there and I will now pull the pin and it's tensioned up. So now I'm gonna rotate the engine a couple times over to make sure that all the timing marks line up. First rotation, everything's lining up. I'm gonna go for one more. Perfect. So with the engine rotated a couple times and the timing marks still lining up perfectly, I'm now gonna throw the cover back on and then I'll work on the accessory belts. I've now got all the accessory belts on there. The alternator ones can be kind of tricky. You really have to loosen the tensioner all the way to get them to slip on there. The AC one's really easy, but now I'm gonna put the fan back on there before I fully tighten these up. Belts are all tensioned and there was oil in the engine. I'm now gonna fire it up, let it run for a bit and then check the tension again. All right, fingers crossed. All right, the engine did not blow up. That is good news. I'm gonna go back over all the belts, make sure the tension and alignment is correct, especially the serpentine belt, and then I'll put the timing belt cover back on and check the oil level again. Everything's back together, including the interior. It is obviously just reversal of taking it out. Oil level is checked, belt tensions are checked. Now I'm gonna go take for a test drive. Runs good. so inclined you can even reset that service light down there for the timing belt but I do not but that's gonna do it for this video my highest now sits at 102,039 kilometers so it's got another uh, 28 years until it needs another timing belt <laughs> no, I won't wait that long